Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Modifying the Electronics of Modern Classics. It's for people with cars from the 1990s and that next decade. What I want to do in today's video is talk about using a programmable digital dash with a programmable engine management system. And I just want to show some of the advantages of linking those two systems together. So what I've done on the whiteboard is I've got a programmable management ECU, I've got a digital programmable dash, and I've got them linked by a CAN bus, Controller Area Network bus. And what that means is that the ECU can send information to the dash, and also the dash can send information to the ECU. So why is that such a big advantage? And why, when you are selecting these components, you should always make sure that they can work together, they can talk to each other? Well, let's look at the inputs that are going into the programmable management ECU. We might have manifold absolute pressure, almost certainly, coolant temperature, intake air temperature. Now, if the ECU is monitoring those inputs, it can send that information down the CAN bus to the dash, and so the dash can also display that same information for the driver to read. Now, notice how we don't need any more sensors. We're just using the sensors that are feeding the engine management system. And critically, we don't need a whole lot of extra inputs in the dash because we're all sending it down that same information link, the CAN bus. But it gets even better than that. The ECU is monitoring things like crank position. But from that, the ECU is calculating information like engine speed, RPM. We can send that calculated information down to the dash as well. So we can see what the ECU is internally calculating and display that on a dash, as well as just having those basic sensor inputs. What else can the ECU be calculating that we can look at? Well, things like fuel economy. Instantaneous fuel economy, for example, is a calculation the ECU can perform and then send that information to the dash. Now, the huge advantage is the dash doesn't need to have a whole lot of analog and digital inputs. It needs to have a CAN input and maybe only a small number of extra inputs. What would those extra inputs be used for? Well, typically, you'd run things like the fuel level. You'd run that input straight into the dash. Maybe if you have a, a door open warning that's going to appear on the dash, you'd run that straight to the dash as well. But compared with trying to monitor all these different sensors with the dash alone, you can see it's a lot, lot easier. If you have a sophisticated dash, the dash can also send information back to the programmable ECU. It can calculate stuff and send that back. Now, in some situations where the dashboard's got a lot of calculation capacity and the ECU hasn't, that can be really, really useful. The key is, when you're selecting your programmable management ECU and when you're selecting your dash, think ahead and think of them working together as a system rather than two separate entities. Make sure they can communicate via a CAN network and make sure that can be a two-way passage of information. And furthermore, make sure that it has enough capacity to send all these different messages. You don't want it being able to send only coolant temperature and manifold pressure, for example. You want to be able to send basically whatever information the ECU is coming up with so you can display it. When you are tuning, and especially if you are tuning your programmable management on the road, being able to set whatever you want to be sent to the dashboard is so useful. It might be uh, an auxiliary output duty cycle, so you can monitor uh, what your idle speed controller is doing on your dashboard as you drive along, if you're tuning that area. It might be you want the ECU to send what the boost control solenoid is doing, what duty cycle the boost control solenoid is working at. So again, you can monitor how your mapping is going by watching just your dash and not also trying to watch a laptop at the same time. Having these two items working really closely together in a networked way, exchanging information, is extremely powerful and it's worth going that extra yard in terms of expense or complexity to set up the system so that it can actually achieve that. It's all in the book. It's called Modifying the Electronics of Modern Classics and I think you'll find a lot in that book of great interest to you. Thank you.